Hello, I'm Dio Taing and I'll be talking about the Internal Security Act 1960. Section 73 states that a police may detain any person for up to 60 days without warrant or trial and without access to a legal counsel. How does one get detained under this act? Well, he has have to have acted or is about to act or is likely to act in a manner prejudicial to the security of Malaysia or any part thereof, or the maintenance of essential services therein, or to the economic life thereof. There has been a case on this section which is called Abdul Malik bin Hussein and Bohan bin Haji Daud and others. The plaintiff's house was searched without warrant and also being only vaguely told that he was under arrest under the ISA only after he had asked. He was assaulted badly and also was interrogated based on his relationship with Datuk Seri Anwar Ibrahim. He had spent 57 days in police custody and he was denied access to legal representation. The case has directly showcased that the article of the federal constitution had been conflicted with and this is under Article 5.3, whereby a person arrested shall be informed immediately of the grounds for his arrest, and that he shall be allowed to consult and be defended by a legal practitioner of his choice. While being detained with no legal practitioner, the detainee will be under an arbitrary detention and have no guarantees of the right to due process and also has no rights to a prompt and impartial trial. It can be said that then Article 5.1 of the Federal Constitution would be violated as there has been deprivation of the life and liberty of a person for the detainee. Now let us question critically on the section of 73 of the ISA. If it is true that these detainees pose a serious threat, then why is it that they are not required to be present in the court? And are there suspicious acts beyond the need to prove the evidence required by the law? Why is it that they are not required the protection from a legal practitioner? It has also been decided in the Abdul Malik bin Hussein's case that there has been no reasonable basis to prove that the plaintiff's detention was necessary as to prevent him from acting in a prejudicial manner. It is also not known to him the essence of the unlawful arrest made to him. And the plaintiff was then awarded an exemplary damages of one million dollars. Regina Hugh Hickling, the author of the ISA and drafter of the Federal Constitution, had stated that I could not imagine then that the time would come when the power of detention carefully and deliberately interlocked with Article 149 of the Constitution will be used against political opponents, welfare workers, and others dedicated to non-violent, peaceful activities. Following with more criticisms other than the author himself, the law has also been repeatedly criticised by the Malaysian Human Rights Groups and also the Malaysian Bar Council, the Malaysian Human Rights Commission and the International Human Rights Groups, which called for its appeal. From the facts of this case, it is questionable as to whether the ISA should be subject to Article 4.1, which states that any law passed which is inconsistent with this constitution shall, to the extent of this inconsistency, be void. Created using Powtoon.